What's the most important garden vegetable? In our homestead, it's the tomatoes. Thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Uh, my name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead and today we are going to start processing our tomatoes. Uh, we are dicing tomatoes today, so uh, come along. important garden vegetable for us uh, this year I would say is probably the tomato. Uh, we have two rows of about 35 tomatoes, uh, tomato plants um, in the garden right now. We have one row of hybrid tomatoes and one row of heirloom tomatoes uh, mainly because we've never grown heirloom tomatoes before and um, I was kind of afraid to do all heirloom tomatoes in case they were a you know complete failure. Uh, so um, right now the tomatoes are just starting to ripen. Uh, we've had um, a new experience this year with our tomatoes. Um, a lot of them have been getting worms inside of them, a fruit worm. And so um, we've been using an organic uh, bacteria called Bt on them every few days or once a week to kill the worms before they get in the tomatoes. Uh, so. We've actually been picking the tomatoes as soon as they start giving a little bit of color. We bring them in the house and let them fully ripen in the house so that there's uh, less of a chance for them to get eaten by a worm or something like that. Um, so I've done a little bit of canning already. We've done a little bit of diced tomato canning. Uh, we're going to do some more diced canning or diced tomato canning today. Um, but I guess um, the reason for me that they are the uh, most important vegetable in our garden is because we use tomato products all the time. Um, I cook a lot and I uh, use diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, um, we eat a lot of salsa, I'd like to try ketchup, I'd like to try barbecue sauce, um, and the volume that we go through every week is pretty significant. I was trying to figure out how much I needed a can and I would say that on average uh, we go through two to four pints of some kind of tomato product every week. Uh, so if you multiply that by 52 weeks a year, that's a lot of tomatoes that we need to put up um, for our family to use all year round. And I want to just tell you that I've gotten to the point over all of our kind of homesteading, urban homesteading in here, uh, that if I know that I can grow something and if I know that I can put it up and preserve it for our family, um, it kind of get it kind of bothers me when I run out of that um, and I have to start buying that from the store. Um, that's just something about me. I know I can do something. I can do it better uh, than uh, the grocery store can do and, and so I want to be able to provide that for my family. Um, so today I want to show you just a couple things about canning. I'm going to show you that we uh, skin the tomatoes before we dice them up and we're going to dice some pints of tomatoes today. So I'm in the house and I have all the tomatoes that need to be uh, diced and canned today and the first thing that I need to do is to get all the skins off. Uh, so uh, you can see on these tomatoes that, well first of all, they have an X on them and they're all upside down. Uh, but what you have to do in order to skin them is first you need to take the core out and then on the bottom of them you need to cut an X in there so that the uh, skin will peel off. Um, any kind of weird spots or yucky spots, um, I always dig out or completely cut out uh, before I do it just to make sure that there isn't anything bad in the tomato. Um, so this is the last one that I have to do. I just wanted to show you uh, that you, know, you just dig out the core 
and uh, put that in your your compost bin or feed it to your chickens. Easier said than done, I guess. And then on this one, there's two kind of weird spots there. So I'm just going to cut around those to get those out. Oops. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to cut an X. On this one, you have a choice. You can remove that now, or you can remove it, um, you know, when you're dicing it up. I probably don't have to do the X anymore, but I'm just going to for you guys. And then after this, uh, you can move on to the next step, which is uh, getting the skins off. Now I want to kind of show you, I want you to come over with me and I'll show you my setup over here by the stove. So to get the skins off, you're going to plunge them in boiling water over here. Um, and then you're going to let them stay in there and swirl them around until uh, you can see that the skins are starting to peel off and then you're going to take them out and put them in ice water um, until they cool off a little bit and more of the skin will peel away and you'll just be able to peel the skins right off and then put them in your bowl. Um, so we're going to get started and do that. I'm going to grab the compost bin for the tomato skins, put that back here, take this off because it's really hot. And carefully put these in for just maybe 30 seconds or so. So come on in here and see if you can look at this. So they're just, you know, dancing around in here. And I can tell you that uh, really ripe tomatoes will, the skins will peel faster than um, tomatoes that aren't quite ripe yet. This one here, you can see it's just starting, the skin is starting to peel away a little bit on the side there of that opening. And this one here is a good, a good example. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully it's in focus. You can see that the skin, it has kind of burst. So I'm gonna take that out and put that in the ice water. Check on the other ones. They also look ready. I'm going to put the top back on there because that is heating up the house. Now I'm just going to let these, you could just let these set or you could, you know, do this and dunk them in and out a little bit. And that helps the skin, it stops the cooking process and really helps the skin peel away from the flesh of the tomato. So you can see, here's the skin and it really just easily comes right off of that tomato. And that makes the process so, so easy. Look at that. I wish the beet skins would have come off that easily when I canned beets. So put those over here with my others. All right, so on to the next step, which is starting to dice them up and getting them into the, uh, the jars. Okay, so I have all of the tomatoes skinned and it's time for me to get canning. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to share with you first is um, that even though tomatoes are acidic, um, and in order to water bath can, you need to be canning things that are acidic, uh, but toma tomatoes, depend depending on what variety you're using, um, you know, the level of acidity may be different. So um, all the universities and the people that test um, the canning guidelines uh, recommend that you add um, lemon juice. So I'm going to be using lemon juice today. Um, I uh, recommend using lemon juice from the store rather than fresh lemons because also with lemons, the acidity from one lemon to another or one variety to another, that acidity also um, Fluctuates. So to maintain um, everything at a constant, uh, use bottled lemon juice. Um, for a pint, I'm going to use uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice in each pint. 
Um, if you were going to do quarts, you would want two tablespoons. Uh, so I'm going to start out just by adding that into my jars. Uh, the canner I'm going to be using today uh, holds 10 pints. Um, and so I just am planning uh, today to can 10 pints and get that done with. Um, and uh, if I have leftover and have more to can, then I'll make a decision at that point to can more. And then, you know, it's really just as easy as cutting these up into, um, into diced pieces. It's, there's nothing really to it. Really, the size of the pieces is, you know, up to you. Um, I'm just going to put them in nice pieces and just start putting them in the jars. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the jars um, until it gets up to kind of like the one inch mark. Um, and then I'm going to use um, boiling water to fill up the rest of it to the half inch mark. Um, as I go along, I'm just going to press down on here um, to try to get as many tomato pieces in there as possible. Um, I choose to raw pack. Uh, which means I don't cook them before I put them in the jars. Um, it's just easier for me. Um, it's not as hot in the kitchen in the summer. Um, but if you like to do that, there is um, that option as well for you to heat them up. Uh, cut them all up, put them in a, a um, pan, heat them up, and then you pack them in to the jars um, hot. But I like to raw pack. So I'm going to get the rest of these all cut up and into the jars uh, before I get them into the canner. Well, we've diced up all the tomatoes and it looks like it came out to uh, 16 pints. So even though my canner only holds 10 pints, I'm going to do two different batches to get them all done uh, because I need to move on to other things. Um, so I have them all uh, filled up to, you know, plus or minus um, an inch under the top of the jar. Um, and then I'm going to fill the rest of it with some boiling water up to about a half inch. Um, and uh, I'm going to take out the air bubbles just by kind of moving everything around in there. I'm going to double check and make sure that it's about a half inch. It's about right. I'd rather be a little under than over. Uh, I'm going to wipe off the rim, make sure that that is clean, and put on a hot new lid. And put that right in the canner. I'm going to do the same thing with nine more and get them going. So the first batch is done. Uh, I've got 10 of them that I had here in the canner. Now I didn't tell you, but uh, tomatoes canned in this way should be in the boiling canner, uh, boiling water canner for uh, 40 minutes after it comes to a boil. Um, and then turn the heat off, take the lid off for another five minutes, and then you can take them out of the water, being careful not to tip them or anything. Uh, tomatoes have a tendency to kind of boil over in the jar and spill some of the contents out. And if you uh, are really careful and are very steady-handed, uh, that won't happen. 
Uh, but that's also the main reason why you turn the heat off and take the lid off for five minutes. It gets everything, gives everything a chance to kind of settle down a little bit before you take it out of the canner. Um, but one more thing before we go, um, I had a really great surprise uh, as I was putting uh, the can the jars in the canner. Uh, Samantha came out to me and said, Mom, when you do the next batch, I really want to learn how. And so that is probably the best thing of my day uh, for sure. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to show her what to do a little bit. Uh, I'm really proud of her that she wants to help me with canning. I think it's important uh, to pass on these skills to my girls. Um, and I've just kind of been waiting for them on their own to want to do it. So we're just going to get started real quick. And uh, Samantha, go ahead and start with this one here. Put the blue thing in there. I know you've done a little bit of this with me before. We're going to take some of the boiling water and we're going to put a little bit in there until it's kind of halfway between where the tomatoes are and the top of the jar. A little bit more. Like that one? Yep. And then we need to get the air bubbles out, so take this tool and stick it down in there. Hold it with the other hand. Yeah, all around the side. And then in the middle. That's good, now in the middle. And then take this off so you can measure how much water is still in there. Poke those down a little bit so they're in the water. And then use the measuring part to check that it's a half inch down. It needs a little bit more water. So put just a little bit in there until it looks right. Keep going, keep going. All right, remeasure. That looks to be about right. I'd rather be a little under than over. Yep, wipe it off. Good job. All right, let's start over, yep. The ring. Now I use this. Be real careful so it doesn't fall on the floor. Now I'll open the lid. Good job. Now you start all over. Okay. So thanks everybody for stopping by the homestead and uh, joining us to learn about um, tomatoes being the most important vegetable in our garden and why and uh, going through the canning process and for you to uh, see our kids starting to learn how to homestead themselves. So if you liked this video, if you would give it the thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And I hope you know by now that we love communication within the comment section. Give us a shout, tell us what's going on and, and what you think of our videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that too. And uh, click the notification button so that you know uh, when we have a new video coming out. So until next time, you guys, thanks for stopping by. Take care and God bless. And thank you guys so much for stopping by the homestead today. We do truly appreciate every one of you for wanting to be part of our lives. Uh, we're now going to be putting out five new videos every week, Monday through Friday. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time back on the homestead. God bless.